In today's digital landscape, businesses rely on an ever-increasing number of APIs to connect applications and data to drive efficiency and enhance customer experiences. With traditional tools and technologies, developing, publishing, securing, and monitoring APIs is a complex, time-consuming process. At Workato, we believe setting up an API service should be simple and fast. Let's take a look at how I, as an API developer, can use Workato's API platform to manage my APIs. My company, like most businesses, already has a number of APIs for our different business systems, including an API for our inventory management system that allows clients to check inventory levels for our various products. Rather than directly exposing this API to partners, I want to use a proxy service to secure my API behind a modern, easily configurable gateway. To publish my inventory management APIs in Mercado, I start by navigating to Platform, selecting API Platform, and then clicking into the API Collections tab. Collections are an easy way to organize APIs into logical groupings, like product registration or event management APIs. To start, I'm going to create a collection for my existing inventory management API. First, I'm prompted to select the type of collection. Since I'm proxying requests to an existing API service, I'll select API Proxy Collection, and then select the on-prem HTTP server hosting my inventory management API. Then I can upload an API spec that details the endpoints in this API. Workato reads in this spec and automatically creates endpoints with the correct name, path, and method. Everything here looks correct, so I'll click Next, verify the details for my collection, and click Create. In just a few steps, my endpoints are set up and ready for me to configure access controls and get testing. But what about APIs that still need to be built? Typically, building an API is an iterative process that takes both business system expertise with the systems you're interfacing with and the technical expertise to create the API code. In my case, I need to create a new order management service for our upcoming e-commerce site. Collaborating with our development team, we put together a design spec for the new API, including our request and response schema, and the business systems we'll need to sync data to. Normally, this is where I'd break out my code editor in my API documentation and get building, but let's take a look at how I can build this API directly in Workato instead. Just like before, I'm going to start with setting up my collection. This time, I'll select API Recipe Collection. Once again, I'll start with an API specification that describes the new API I want to build, and verify that my endpoints have been configured correctly, including enabling caching for increased performance where appropriate. Finally, I'll supply a project to store these endpoints, and create my new collection. This time, in addition to creating the endpoints in our collection, Workato has automatically created an associated recipe for each endpoint. Clicking into one of these recipes, it looks like any other Workato recipe. Only this time, my recipe is triggered by an API request. Opening my trigger, I can see that the request schema and response schema have already been configured per my specification. With my trigger already configured for me, I can jump straight to creating the logic behind my API recipe. In this case, I'll need to send the supplied sales order data into SAP. To start, I'll add a new action to my recipe. Select SAP from my list of connected applications, and then select to begin a new transaction. Next, I can add another action to my recipe, again selecting SAP, and this time select the call BAPI action. Now I can supply a name and description for the relevant business API to create a new sales order in SAP, and supply the relevant transaction ID from our previous step by selecting the corresponding data bill from our data tree. Finally, we can supply the required order information to SAP by mapping the data from our API request trigger into the corresponding fields in SAP. To finish off my recipe, I'll add an error handling step to catch any errors that might pop up in my process by dragging my existing steps under the new monitor block and removing the placeholder step. Then, if there's an error, I'll add another action in SAP to end my current transaction and roll back my changes. Next, I'll drag and drop my response and set it to return a failure code back to the requester. Finally, 
I can copy and paste all of these steps and then modify them to commit my changes and send a successful response back to the requester with the order ID from SAP in the case that no error was received. In just a few minutes, I was able to build my API with the recipe editor and built-in connectors without any code and without having to read any complex API docs to determine how to map data to my destination system. Now that our collections are created and my API recipe is built, I need to specify who has access by setting up access profiles for the relevant clients. So from here, I'll save and exit from the recipe editor, start my recipe, and then navigate back to the API platform. From here, I can open the Clients tab, select the client I want to grant access to, and create a new access profile for this client with a descriptive name. Access profiles consist of three primary parts. First, I set the collections that can be used by clients with this access profile. Next, I get to choose the authentication method to prevent any unauthorized access. For internal access, a simple auth token or OAuth2 authentication may be sufficient, but for external access or sensitive data, JSON web tokens or OpenID Connect can be used. For increased security, I can also set up an IP whitelist to restrict access to my API service to only known trusted networks. Lastly, I'll set the policy containing the quality of service for this client. Policies contain configurable usage quotas and rate limits so I can control costs incurred from API calls and prevent my connected apps from being overwhelmed with requests. Then I just click Next and be sure to store my authorization token somewhere secure. To ensure everything is configured correctly, I can navigate back to my endpoint for testing. First, I'll enable my endpoint, and then by glancing at the documentation for the request body, I can get an idea how to put together a sample request. After putting together a request, I can click Try it out, paste in my request body, and execute the test. Scrolling down, I can see that we received a successful response back, so our endpoint is configured successfully and ready to be shared with clients. You'll notice there is no certificate management or infrastructure configuration required to set up our endpoints. Mercado's serverless architecture automatically takes care of everything from SSL certificate management for custom domains to concurrent request queuing, so I can focus more time on building new endpoints to address business needs and less time on operations. But building and configuring an API is only half the battle. Once APIs are published, they need to be monitored and maintained. From the API dashboard, I have a centralized view to monitor my APIs for errors and policy violations, response times, and concurrency. At a glance, I can see how API usage is trending over time and what clients and endpoints are driving that usage. And finally, with logs, I can see exactly what is happening with each incoming request. I can quickly filter down to problematic requests, jump directly to the job that caused the error, and troubleshoot my API to get back up and running as soon as possible.